Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Ag View Pitch. As we start a new year of 2023, uh, Chris and I are joined here with Jared Schmidt and Joe Paulson. Uh, you can check this one out on YouTube if you're listening to it on a podcast. Uh, gentlemen, good morning. Jared, how are you on the beginning of this new year? Good morning. I am good. Good. Yeah. Crazy, crazy how we're into a new year, but here we are. You got to start writing your checks with a three at the end. I usually figure that out about March. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They'll correct it. They'll still take them. <laughs> Chris, and I, Chris and I were joking and I think the farmers will get it. Um, you know, there's, there's the two longest days of the year. And one of them is December 31st uh, for most people. And the other one is sometimes like, you know, June, June 5th, June 15th, depending on when your uh, last prevent plant date is. So uh, <laughs> hopefully you guys got through the longest day of the year. Joe, how are you doing? Doing fantastic. You're not that far from nope. Jared right now, right? You're hanging out in the woods. 62 miles. Okay. <laughs> Jared is a, a snowshoeing. Uh, fiend he walks out and checks traps and things like that so if you see sasquatch walking around it's probably <laughs> just jared hanging out outside your cabin i wouldn't worry about it yep and uh chris you had a good new year we spent some time with uh family hanging out there you get a good start with the workout this morning did you i didn't work out yet i'm gonna work out after we get done doing this i i slept in a little bit we had we have uh, another dog in our house now so uh it's that's just what we need is be you know funneling uh, uh seven seven kids and and uh what we got between spouses and girlfriends now yeah you, you add another five or six to the equation and then grandkids and the grandkids just keep populating too so the house gets <laughs> more full every year which is awesome yeah you're gonna need a little bit of rest after your uh restful new year i guess but yeah exactly <laughs> So, you know, we, we're hopping on today, and, and the title of this is going to be something about, you know, 75 hard. And uh, this group, the people that are on this podcast, on this video, we, we hopped into this 75 hard challenge uh, in the middle of harvest. And to overview this for people, I have the rules in front of me. We'll go into a little bit of the history and kind of why we decided to do this. But uh, this the 75 hard challenge is developed by Andy Frisella. And if you guys like podcasts, like listening to some stuff, he's a, I don't know, Chris, how would you say he's a little, he's out there. He's not afraid to say what's on his mind and uh, it's a little crass sometimes. So buckle up if you're going to check it out, but he's got some really good content. Yeah. You want to have your big boy or big girl ears on because there's a <laughs> lot of F-bombs. Yeah. But so he, he created this called 75 hard and what it is, is for 75 days, you have a set of rules that you cannot alter from. And it's simple, but it's not easy is kind of how they explain it. So the first one is pick a diet and stick to it for 75 days. No cheats, no alcohol. The second one is to read 10 pages of a nonfiction book every single day. So this isn't, uh, you know, typically what they say is we want something that's going to help with your professional development, your personal development. Maybe it's something you've been thinking about reading, but haven't had a chance to. Um, so 10 pages every single day of a nonfiction book. Drink a gallon of water every day. Uh, we're going to come back to, you know, what's the hardest for each of us and kind of what we went through there. Uh, but drink a gallon of water for every day that gets people. Take a progress picture every single day. Um, I don't know if Jared, if you were flexing in yours or <laughs> what you did for your progress picture, but it's important to get one every single day because a lot can change in 75 days. And then the final one is uh, two 45 minute workouts uh, in, in a day. And one of them has to be outside. So probably not a lot of people doing 75 hard here, uh, beginning of the new year, Joe, you look like you're bundled up for it, maybe to go out on a snowshoe walk or something, but you know, it's uh it's one thing to consider that that mental toughness and the mental fortitude that you're building to do this, um, that outdoor workout has a big shape. Now, most importantly, is if you miss a rule, any of those rules, picture, gallon of water, doing one of your outside workouts, inside workouts, you start over on day one. If you're on day three, you start over. If you're on day 47, you start over. And the principle behind this is it's so simple because you only have these you know, five rules, six rules to follow. But if you miss one of them, that's it. And there's a lot of accountability that goes into that. So I, I think one thing that would be good to talk with, just since I've outlined that and to kind of get the conversation going here, 
uh, Joe, I want to pick on you first. And, and I'm picking on you because I started 75 hard last spring during planting season. And I got today 55 and I got down with the stomach flu and was miserable, terrible. I missed a workout and that was it. I ended it. And you had a similar experience here this fall, which we'll get into. But tell me, what was the hardest thing for you during 75 hard when you think of those list of rules? What, what was the hardest thing that you had to work with? The gallon of water. Yeah. A little bit of seems, time in a track. Seems simple. It, it was, that was, well, I, I just, I, I, I would forget about it. I, I can't tell you how many times I was slamming a half a gallon of water at you know 11 o'clock at night trying to get the rest of it in before we got done you know before i went to bed yeah might have interrupted Maddening. your sleep a little bit <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> now i i'm i'm the youngest in this group i know chris uh you you refer frequently to uh frequent bathroom visits so you know keeping on top of that early in the day can uh, sometimes be helpful well, yeah, you don't, you want to sleep at night. If you drink a half a gallon at 10 o'clock at night, you're going to be up pissing all night long. <laughs> or at least if you're 56 years old, you will be anyway. I guarantee you that. Well, does that count for an indoor? I was too. Does that count for an indoor <laughs> workout though? All your trips back and forth to the bathroom? I don't think or... that counts. No, the steps don't work. Jared, I'll pick on you next. You know, what was the hardest thing for you as, as you went through this? It kind of, it varied. The hardest thing was initially just making the decision to do it. I mean, it was, I, I talked to my wife about it and she goes, you're going to do what? I go, I, I don't know if I'm going to do it. I'd visit, revisit it. And then I'm like, she goes, well, you got your birthday. We got our anniversary. We're doing this and that. And then I just, I made a decision to do it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but it varied. Um, it started out uh, reading. The reading was, I just hated it. Just mm -hmm. boy, to stay focused and read, I'd put it, I'd get through it. And now at the end, I'm, I got into it and it kind of got into the right books and now I'm revisiting them books right now. Cause what I did read actually had a lot of value that um, is coming back into, in the meetings we're doing over winter and such. So you now I'm like, ah, I wish I would have paid more attention reading, um, Go back. <laughs> but I, but I'm going back. So yeah, Jared, I, I love what you said there because anybody that's listening to this one, you know, forget that you're doing it during harvest, drop the 75 days anywhere into your calendar. You know, I got a big, a big calendar here on my wall. It's like eight feet wide and four feet tall. And I can't think of a good time to do 75 hard. And, and no, I think you can talk farmers, yourself out of it because yeah. you're busy. All right, whatever. Um, but then at the end of it, you're like 75 days. And if you do it, or even if you get part way through it, then you're like, well, there's no reason I can't. I mean, what is your reason you can't do these items in a day? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're just sitting here watching TV or on on social media for, you know, you could read your book. Okay, we can do that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and but the main thing is the discipline and the focus. It's 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 a bitch. Mm -hmm. Now, but, my, my wife, Hannah, she was pretty thrilled when I took the treadmill and I drug it into our living room and set it right in front of the TV. You know, because it is, it's, it's a huge commitment. I, we were, um, you know, raising our, our one-year-old or less than a one-year-old during this whole process. And it, it wears on your mind and it kind of drags on you. And, and any of us can talk, can speak to this point, but you are at some point sacrificing family time to try to achieve your goals for 75 hard. And I wanted to go get my second workout in. And my wife wanted to hang out on the couch and just spend time, you know, because in, in relationships, it's not about quality. It's also about quantity a lot of times. And she just wanted to spend time with me. I said, okay, we'll spend time together, but I'm going to be on the treadmill over here and we can talk about, <laughs> you know, what's going on, what are we watching? And yeah. um, so anyways, I want to come back to that on kind of the time commitment there. Chris, what was the hardest thing for you or what is the hardest thing for you when you do 75 hard? Yeah, well, I'll just give a, a real quick background. So Alyssa did 75 hard the first time and I drank beer and ate ice cream, popcorn and licorice at night before I went to bed while she was drinking the last of her water. And so, you know, and then she was going to do it the, the second time or her second or maybe it was her third time. Yeah, it was her second time. And I decided I better do it. And that was last spring, same time you were doing it. Um, and so I actually, that was my first time was last spring. I would say, you know, when we started it this fall, 
it was horrendous compared to spring because fall, I run the grain dryer and everything. And just the time and the lack of sleep was the hardest part for me because, you know, I got to get up middle of the night, check the dryer. I got to do all this stuff, but it, it taught me discipline that I got, would have gotten nowhere, any place in life ever before that you can get that stuff done, you know? And so the hardest part for me was just, I think the lack of sleep, especially on the second one, the first one, it was, it was the, the least thing I thought it was going to be, which was the alcohol. Cause I don't drink there. I, at least I don't think I drank that much alcohol, but all of a sudden you go to a social event and you got to drink water. It's like, <laughs> uh, okay. You know? So, I mean, I think those are kind of the kind of my things that were hard. I remember Alyssa sharing a story and she was talking about you guys were going out to a Mexican restaurant or something. And you wanted to go, go eat and get some, you know, good food. Cause you can stay within your diet. You know, you choose your diet. You don't have to go on the Atkins diet. You don't have to go on the carnivore diet. Um, you can choose your diet and be as flexible or as strict on that as you want to, but whatever you decide on, on day one, that's what you have to do for that 75 days. And Alyssa said, you guys went to a Mexican restaurant or something and you're sitting there and they said, yeah, it'll be a 45 minute wait. And you're like, okay, no problem. Well, what do you want to do when you're at a Mexican restaurant? You want to <laughs> stuff your face with chips and queso and and have a couple margaritas and wait for your food to come out. So you guys were just kind of sitting there looking around, twiddling your thumbs, like, yep. what, are we, what are we supposed to do? You know? And so I think that discipline is pretty important. quality time. You talk. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, on, on the discipline piece and the time commitment, since I hit on that earlier, anybody can take this, but you know, I shared kind of my experience and some of the challenges that, I had as, as a young parent and just with all the things that we have going on, everybody's busy. Um, do, do you guys have any other, you know, things that are related to that on, you know, that pull between family time and Joe, I know you have a very, you know, uh, more challenging example than that, but anybody else want to share or jump in there on things you experienced on that end? Well, um, yeah, a couple of different ways on us. We, we went to some sporting events and such and, you know, you know, they're having their beers and their drinks and, you know, they come back and go to the bar hotel and I, you know, I'd come back and find the hotel gym and get my workout in before midnight. You know, my, you know, the, the, you know, sometimes it'd be 1130 at night, but I'd get her done. Um, same with, and the harvesting is true, you know, with us harvesting silage um, and nobody knew at work. I had two guys um, that knew I was doing it and everybody else had no idea. They were confused a lot of days what was up with me. <laughs> um, and, but nobody would ask. Um, and, and some of them, some still don't know. Some just started finding out here over the holidays and they're like, you did what? And <laughs> he started explaining them. it and they just started, they're still confused. With all the weight you lost, they probably thought you were sick. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And, uh, but the time, I mean, it, yeah, it, there'd be nights I'd be walking, you know, in the dark with the dog, the dog loved it. Um, so that's the, you know, it, it's interesting. The dog still loves it. You know, we're just on a lesser scale right now. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. We would definitely echo that. That's a the discipline of having to, you know, put it in 15 hours or whatever it is and then have to come home. And, you know, I walked circles in my driveway at night. Um, I live on a semi-busy road and I was kind of a fr and and I didn't want people to see me. So I... uh kind of stayed secluded back up in my yard and I just watched walk circles and I tell you what that was you know one of the more difficult things but I uh usually ate dinner I use at first I, I I tried to get the workout in before I ate well I was so damn hungry that I was just miserable so I uh what I started doing is I I grilled all my meals. So I would walk while I was grilling and, and uh, you know, that worked out actually pretty slick. Um, That's awesome. You know, you got 20 minutes in and then, and then threw stuff on the grill and then got your last, uh, last 25 minutes in while, while you were cooking your food and, you know, That's made super, it through. That's super cool. Um, and Chris, you know, whether you're walking circles in your driveway or checking trap lines, you know, Chris, you walk the waterway at your house. Yeah, we have a, 
um, waterway complex behind you know, about a 200 acre field behind our house that we farm. And so um, actually in the, in the spring, it was nice because we had it mowed, you know, so you could, I mean, it wasn't quite like walking on a sidewalk, but it was pretty good exercise. And then we had total, total shit weather last spring. It was wet. We didn't start planting until like, I don't know, I think it was May 9th or something before we got, it got started planting. So it wasn't too bad doing 75 hard because we weren't as busy in the field. And, um, you know, but we had a lot of rain and, you know, you go outside and do that workout, no matter what the weather is, you know, yeah. you'd have days when it was 40, 40 degrees, but the wind's blowing 40 mile an hour and it's raining and, you know, you're going to go and do it anyway. You don't have a choice. I mean, that's, that's the thing that, 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 you know, I think taught or teaches discipline is that you can do things. You can do things you think you can't do. And I think it makes us all a better, better person. It makes us all stronger and better at everything we do. Mm -hmm. The, you know, I, I didn't hit myself there on the, on the hardest things. And one of the hardest things for me was actually uh, reading. And to Joe's point, you know, when are you getting those workouts in? When are you doing these things? There were, there's a lot of nights where I stood up to read. Otherwise I was going to fall right. asleep. And there were times that I fell asleep standing up reading too, just because you've put in a 16 hour day and you kind of got to slap yourself and people, people listening to this are probably like, okay, well, that seems a little extreme. Um, you know, my background in, in the military and the sleep deprivation and stuff that I went through, um, you, you kind of just force yourself to do it and you don't think about it. But for, for, for someone listening to this, they're probably like, wow, that's a lot. The time management that Jared talked about, though, is you have time to do all these things in your day. And also, you got to ask yourself, what is the most important thing that I can do with my day? You know, the most important thing that you can do is look out for your health, take care of your body, get sleep when you can, eat good foods, drink a lot of water, develop your, your mental aptitude and fortitude when it comes to reading and professional development, personal development. That's why this 75 hard is so attractive. I think of how do we put ourselves in this period of discipline in times when we don't want to, or when it's not easy. And I have a quote here from Andy Frisella that I, that I think is pretty impactful. He says, what you're doing in the short term to make your some to make yourself comfortable is killing your potential. So to read that again, what you're doing in the short term to make yourself comfortable is killing your potential. And I'll be the first to admit, I love Oreos. Like that was one of the first things I decided to cut out. <laughs> I love Oreos. And, you know, you sit down and you eat six or seven of them and you got 400 calories of Oreos. You know, that's comfortable. That's something that you want to do. But long-term, the amount of work that you have to put in to burn off 400 calories of Oreos is just astronomical. So you kind of have to weigh that hand in hand, right? I think but there's like 3,500 calories in a pound of fat. Yeah. Average. Yeah. And if you, you could just eat sticks of butter on that too, if you look yeah. at all the Christmas cookies that were consumed here over the last couple of weeks, it's okay. I eat Christmas cookies too, but um, you know, there's, there's a lot to be said about that comfort. Um, I, I don't know if I had anything else on that. I just thought that that was pretty good. And coming from the guy that developed this program of understanding millions of people will try this, many will fail but it's the people that have the persistence that keep going to do it again, to finish and, and show yourself that you can have that discipline. You can have the, um, the aptitude to get it done. What, um, how, how do you guys think about this? I guess just open discussion here as a farmer versus someone else doing it. Do you really think that we're at some sort of a disadvantage just because of how busy we are, or is that just us making excuses? Well, I'll, I'll touch on that. I think as farmers, we think that our being busy, whether it's driving or, you know, that we're really working hard. We do work hard, but it's, it's different. You know, we're really, you know, we're not putting ourselves out there. You know, this just highlights that, mm -hmm. um, this type of deal, you know, it just, we make an excuse, you know, that we're doing all these hours and such in a day that we don't, we can't do it. Don't need to do it. We don't need to do it. We talk to ourselves that we just don't need to because we're farmers. And mm -hmm. uh, I would disagree with that <laughs> more so now, you know, Joe, Joe, you commented on that too. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> there's a lot of people out there that are super busy. I mean, look at, you know, like nurses, I mean, you know, they, 
work whatever it is, a lot of 12-hour shifts, and then uh, a lot of times that runs over, and those schedules are extremely rigid, and they're running around all, all day long. And, um, you know, so there's, you know, there's other occupations out there. We're just busy, um, but most of us are riding around in, you know, Cadillacs for, uh, you know, 15 hours a day. You know, we're not sitting in, at least not me, I'm not sitting in a 806 with a year-round cab trying to plant 1,800 acres with an eight-year-old planter like my dad was, um, or an 815 combine trying to combine 1,700 acres with a four-row head and a 15-foot platform. You know, we we don't know what, or at least not me, I, I, I don't know what work is compared to what my, um, you know, my dad and my grandfather did. Um, you know, I think it, at the end, it, it's an excuse and it's mm-hmm. just a part of the, part of the challenge, you know, mm-hmm. Joe, you, you could work those hours. I think that's really interesting. You could work and you do, you work your ass off. I know you do, but if you had the, the same, um, I don't know how to say this and don't take this wrong way, fear of failure, or, you know, how hard your dad and your, your parents and your ancestors were pushing themselves the, the drive and the inspiration and what that does in today's world is makes you more money and it builds wealth Correct. and it builds things, the Cadillacs and the trucks that you sit in. And the reason I bring this up is what is more important than your health and taking care of your family and the things that you do and, and where so many farm operations and egg businesses are today is you, you can live comfortably with what you're doing and you work hard for it, but where do you draw the line? Where, where, do, how do you define success in your life? Is it another $40,000 of income or is it feeling good every day when you wake up, knowing that your family is taken care of, knowing that you have the health and you slept well and you're building your professional and personal development for your family and friends. And so I I hear what you're saying about, you know, we're not working or, you know, most of us do not have the same risk or things at play that maybe our prior generation did, but we're at the point where we can take time, we can take dollars, we can take things to dedicate towards improving our lives and the lives of those around us by focusing on ourselves and, and taking on things like the 75 hard challenge. Is that fair? That's totally fair. And I want to preface when I say Cadillacs, I mean, the tractors that and the cabs yeah. that we sit in are, you know, uh, far superior to what they were, you know, 30, 40 years ago. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, back then it was you, you, you fed another few hogs, you fed another few, few head of cattle. And, you know, the money that you made was a lot on on your back now nowadays uh you know a hard work ethic uh can can really really net a lot a lot more money Mm -hmm. but at what expense you know it's this work-life integration and uh you know the the 75 hard i felt like i went in a tunnel you know you just were like i was i was just completely in a tunnel and i actually you know loved that And I think the only way to get into that tunnel was to, it had to be all or nothing. You know, you're constantly negotiating with yourself on, you know, well, I'll just, I'll just only have a drink when I go out to eat or um, I'll, you know, I'll just have a dessert on sat on Sunday nights, or, you know, you're just constantly negotiating with yourself with the 75 hard, it's all or nothing. And you have to, and which which is actually the only way because what happens is when you negotiate with yourself you continue to negotiate with yourself Mm -hmm. and uh the 75 hard really helps put you in that tunnel Mm -hmm. Joe's wisdom again he always has these good bits of wisdom and stuff one of the things we did as a group which i thought was really cool too that i think is worth mentioning shay Uh, Jared and Joe is, you know, we had that text message link between the four of us too. And so 
if one of us, you know, I'm, I'm the foodie probably of the group, you know, maybe I, my, my whole thing out of this deal was health and longevity and, and, and it was more of a keto type diet or whatever. And I was sending you guys pictures of my food all, all the time. And Jared was sending pictures of his walks in the middle of the night and different stuff like that. And, you know, and Joe would be sending pictures of, of all kinds of different stuff stuff and kind of say the same thing and just the dialogue back and forth i thought was really cool well knowing that you have other a people, lifeline yeah knowing that you have other people going through the suck is half the battle i mean that's why you know my time in the military the, the saying is embrace the suck right just you're out there you're miserable the guy next to you is miserable and 75 hard isn't that miserable so i don't want to i don't want to discourage people from thinking screw this why would i want to jump into that but you know, you know that other people are going through the same thing and there's a lot of value in that community or in that, you know, tribal outlook or however you want to phrase that, that is important. Um, I wanted to hit on here real quick, just get your guys' take. You know, how did you feel while you were doing 75 hard? Like the good, bad, the ugly. How, Jared, how, how did you feel when you're kind of going through all this? Oh, it was all over the board, actually. You know, you'd have your, your excitement, your high, you're like, ah, oh, I can do this. This is, yeah. And then you're like, gosh, these days are drag. And I had, a, I printed it off. So I, I, I filled in the boxes every day. You know, that was, that was a good way to stay on task and, you know, to make sure it was done. You know, my wife didn't find out I was doing photos till like three quarters of the way through. She's like, why are you taking the phone to the bathroom? I go, well, I'm taking my <laughs> daily photo. She goes, are you serious? And yeah, I showed her and she's like, oh my gosh, you know, and, um, but, um, and there was some lows. I mean, I got, I got sick one week during harvest, um, with COVID and I didn't, boy, I was a bugger. Um, you know, I, <laughs> I denied it for a couple of days and, you know, I went to my chopper office, but I still, I still powered through, you know, it was, my walks were slow and, you know, thought I was I'm like, ah, but I wasn't going to quit. I thought, no, just another day, another check in the box. And then I got towards the end. I'm like, oh, I'm almost done. Now I feel guilty that I maybe should have done more. I should have, yet I, I was checking all the box. So that's why I'm embracing and doing it again, mm -hmm. um, because it's such a learning moment. Um, all of it is, you know, I, I accomplished some things at the gym that I've haven't, you know, always kind of should be able to get to. But, you know, I turned 50 this year and achieved some things that, you know, a lot of kids in their 20s can't do. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, I had somebody tell me, well, like, well, you can't do 75 hard again. You got to do something else to change it up but they've never done 75 hard. I'm like, ah, <laughs> you have no idea. It's kind of addictive a little bit. You feel like when you're done, you're like, well, now what, you know? Yeah. And, you know, so it's still doing some things to keep on that task and looking forward to, to, to do revisiting it, but a little different focus on it. Yeah. Very good. Chris, how about you? How'd you feel kind of going through it? I think for me, you know, it, in the beginning, the very first one I did, first time I did it, I, I think it takes a week or two to adjust to whatever diet you pick. But I would say I I feel phenomenal during the process of it. And, in you know, kind of like Jared said, you know, I turned 56 this year and I, I feel like I'm in my 20s when I'm eating clean. You know, when I'm not eating, I mean, my, my diet was taking out all refined foods and, you know, only eating real food. And within about three days of that. And I can really speak to that coming off of the holidays right now. I feel like a bucket of shit because you eat cookies and you eat stuff you shouldn't eat. And, you know, I feel phenomenal and your, your energy level goes up too, because you, you sleep better. I mean, I, you know, I, I maybe we'll talk about books here in a bit, but, but you know, I, I did a lot of studying on, on nutrition and sleep and I felt great. I, I can't wait to do it again. I mean, I, I know I would get to like day, day in the sixties and I'm like, I don't want this to end because I want to have to keep doing this. Cause it's, you can tell how, how good it is for your health too. Mm -hmm. Joe, I'm just waiting for you to hop in here and be like, I was miserable the whole time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> how, how, how did you feel or how, you know, how was it during the process? I, I echo Chris. I mean, I'm, I'm 42, just turned 43 and I, uh, I felt fantastic. I had the best sleep that I've had in, in absolutely years. 
and it was because of the clean diet. It was, you know, I didn't realize that a beer or two at night could really affect your sleep that much. And, um, I slept fantastic. I mean, my wife, uh, immediately within the first two weeks, she was like, you're a completely different person. And, uh, and she goes, apparently you're a lab that just needs to be ran. And, uh, (laughs) you know, you just need more activity. And, um, and, and I was, I mean, I was just, I was just the most chilled out version of myself the whole time. Um, you know, so I, I felt good. I just was really tired at night, you know, getting, getting that last workout in out outside, you know, you're falling asleep, walking around outside, you know, that's the, you know, contemplating how nice it would be just to lay down on the gravel for about 15 minutes. (laughs) And, uh, you know, you would never, you would never do that before. Mm -hmm. But that's part of why you slept so good too. And, you know, just of, of doing that work and having everything, um, you know, putting all that effort towards it. I, I think on my end, the, you know, I've always been involved with weight training and, and exercise and things like that. But part of the nutrition that I did was uh, fasting, you know, intermittent fasting of some sort. And I wasn't like regimented of, I will only, you know, eat in this six hour window um, because, you know, your body kind of tells you things throughout the process. So I had my diet of what I was doing on consumption but then I also had some timing involved in that. And what I found personally through the intermittent fasting is I would wake up in the morning and I would just have coffee and water until about noon or one o'clock. And Chris had told me this, you know, yeah, he's a food nut, but also, you know, just in some of the reading, he didn't read a book in his life until like two years ago. And now I think we need to get him to stop reading books. I don't know. He has all these crazy ideas, but um, he goes, you know, just look into the intermittent fasting and, and try it and see what you think. And he talked about the mental clarity, you know, you got so much more mental clarity and da da da. And I was kind of like, yeah, okay, whatever. And by the fourth day of doing it, I was like, holy cow, this is no joke. I mean, when you can be sharp, you know, just day in and day out and you're running your business and you're talking to customers and clients and friends and family and whoever else, and you just feel on top of your game. That was huge for me because I felt that the decisions that I made in that 75 days propelled the rest of the year. You know, they finished 2022 strong for me. They have a great foundation for 2023 to the point where I know now, I mean, today I'm doing coffee and water until noon or one o'clock. And if my body tells me I need a little bit of something, I'll do it. But, you know, keep on that water. That mental clarity was huge. And I just, I was very surprised by that personally. Um, one thing I, I would echo that I would echo that too, Shay. I mean, that the I, I have ADD, um, you know, I was medicated back when I was in, in junior high school and stuff. And I've been doing the intermittent fasting for about two, three years, kind of intermittently. I mean, Monday through Friday, I rarely eat before noon. And the laser sharp focus that you have during that fo- that fasting is absolutely no joke and then you eat lunch and then you know do physical stuff in the afternoon uh because your your mental focus is shit then after that you don't realize the fog that you're in you know as you go through your daily tasks because it feels normal and i think that goes back to you know the the stuff that you're doing in the short term to make yourself comfortable is killing your potential eating a donut in the morning is easy You know, it makes you feel good. It fills you up. You got that sugar high. And then for the next four hours, your body is trying to process that, trying to understand, you know, how do I allocate these resources? You're not doing enough energy for the consumption that we have. So we need to turn it into fat. And you guys can call Chris and talk to him on that for four or five hours. But, you know, (laughs) I think there's just a lot to be said about that. I did want to hit on um, the support that I know that I had. Um, from my wife, and I would start by sharing my experience, you know, she, she did not want to do 75 hard, we, you know, young baby and just a lot of stuff going on. And again, it's a huge time commitment. It's a huge sacrifice for yourself and for your family to an extent. 
Um, so she did uh, 75 kind of hard is what she called it. And I thought that was kind of funny, but you know, she's, she weighs nothing. And uh, she found that just by being alongside me in that journey and eating clean and, and doing, making more meals and exercising more and kind of the encouragement that we had back and forth, she came to me at the end of 75 hard. And she's like, my jeans don't fit anymore. I need to go buy new jeans. And I'm like, why is this an expense now in our family of you not doing, you know, doing 75 hard. And of course I was supportive and, you know, that's great or whatever, but she's like, wow, I just didn't realize, you know, for someone that's skinny and healthy and, and young and vibrant, you know, a, a new mother for her to have that much impact um, was huge, but her support was phenomenal. You know, she'd say, Hey, you need to go get your outdoor workout in. Like I can feed our daughter, go do what you need to do. That was pretty incredible and obviously impactful, not only for our marriage and our relationship, but the success that I realized out of doing that. So I don't know, whoever can take it on, on kind of what your experience was. I, my wife would echo the exact same thing. I mean, in fact, she's, you know, uh, she called it uh, 75 easy. And uh, <laughs> she, um, she, 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 she wants to start it again when we get home from the lake here on uh, Tuesday. And, you know, it, it's, you know, in, in a full disclosure, I didn't finish uh, 75 hard. We had some, stuff happen uh that was a little bit uh challenging and she finally kind of came to me and asked me if I would stop and uh I could have kept going uh but it was um it, it 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 just was really bad bad timing and um you know I ended up stepping aside but kept the work out you know one day a week uh, or one one workout a day I kept that going I kept the eating clean going I kept the alcohol thing going but I, I ended up dropping a workout um just to be able to help with some family stuff uh a little a little easier mm -hmm. but she she got a lot out of the experience just like I did mm -hmm. Jared so I ran into some funny things at times so my wife goes to the gym and 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 real regular and you know pretty much on the same page real supportive um but there's a couple times we went out for our an, um anniversary and wanted a dessert for a meal i said no and she got kind of upset with me like no i and same with towards the end we um uh went to a hockey game and they get the warm cookies at the hotel and i wouldn't eat one and she's like it's just a cookie i said no no it's not <laughs> Just gonna pass on it, you know. And I had it, you know, we were up there a couple weeks ago, so I had the cookie, you know, after we're done. But just a couple of little things like that. But others very supportive, you know. And the kids at first were like, "You're gonna do what, Dad?" <laughs> and then once I started and got in, they're like, so, "Yeah, you're not gonna stop." And that's and and they're right, but um, <clears throat> but crazy. But now the fun part is the people that are finding out what happened and explaining it. You know, they they don't understand. You don't understand until you experience it you know you just you just don't mm -hmm. you know it's just you can explain it all you want but well and chris you did it alongside Alyssa too so i mean you had a buddy to be doing it with how did that kind of impact your guys's dedication towards it or probably made it a lot easier sometimes yeah i think it helps immensely like i said the first <laughs> time she did it i just I laid on the couch and ate popcorn and ice cream and licorice and watched her and then i had a beer you know so when I did it with her in the last couple of times, I think it's, I think that's the best way to do it. If it, if but it's kind of like Jared said, you got to have the mindset that, okay, I am going to do 75 harder. Like Joe said, you're either all in or you're, or you're not. And I think, you know, at some point, if, if somebody has done it partially, I think the challenge then is to do it. And I think to, you know, to do it together with your spouse, I think is the best because your wife just same, chuckled to that like, yeah <laughs> yeah well you're on the same you're on to tell her tell her get ready you know so, <laughs> but you know i i think it's a, it's the best way to go about it because you're on the same page and you know you when you're not totally doing it eating that one cookie that jared just talked 
talked about is hard to, you know, it's like, you don't have a reason not to, if you're in the middle of 75 hard, you have a reason not to, and you, and, and, and then it teaches you discipline that I think carries on far beyond the 75th day. You know, you think about everything that you do, you think about those actions that you take and you say, okay, look at the benefits that we've gotten over the last 75 days. And I can tell you, you know, being the foodie of the group or whatever, the nutrition person, I mean, one of the books I read was, was called Eat Smarter. And it's probably the best book I've ever read um, as far as, you know, anything you put in your mouth, you know, it is is having a hormonal effect. It's having all kinds of different effects on you. And I think a lot of us just eat food and don't think about it, you know? And I, and, and for me, again, it's about longevity where, where none of us are getting any younger. And as we get older, you know, one of the worst things we can put in our system is sugar. And, you know, if we can figure out how we can eat real food, I mean, you, you tack an extra eight, or 10 years to your life you talk about grandkids and you talk about family and all that stuff you know to me that's the why you know if you ask the question you know why are you why would you do this or why did you do it or why would you do it again for me it's about health and longevity I want to be here for my grandkids someday and I want to feel good there's another book I've been reading too and and one of the, his quotes in there is is live healthy drop dead you know, so you, you're not in a care center the last five years of your life because your hips are screwed up or you got, you're carrying too much weight around or whatever it is, you, you're in a position to live a quality of life those last five or eight years. That's what I want is I want to be healthy. Sorry. That's my, I have a, oh, that's awesome. I have, I have an excellent, uh, you know, that live healthy, drop dead. My, uh, my grandfather never stopped moving. I mean, that guy just went and went and went and went. And he spent about three, the last three weeks, he spent in a hospital bed at 92 years old. And, um, you know, and then, and then died. And uh, my grandmother, on the other hand, um, God bless her. She has passed away here uh, a week ago, but she was, uh, you know, a big proponent of sitting still. You're going to wear, you're going to wear your joints out. And she just sat in a chair and, uh, you know, she lasted two years in a nursing home and died at age 97. The last two years were not, were not good because she couldn't do anything. And, uh, you know, we all know these old farmers that just worked right up to the very end and literally just dropped dead, you know, and, uh, th there's, there's something to be said for, you know, really having an active, healthy lifestyle for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Chris, you brought up the books here and, and I'm, I'm cognizant of our time here as well, just for your guys' sake and, and for the listener too, but um, real quick, you know, what did you guys read and, and what was kind of the impact? Would you recommend it to someone else? Oh, I started out with Eat That Frog, which was on procrastinating, which was actually perfect for starting out the 75 hard. <laughs> You know, and and then my wife, um, she's a manager of the hospital, so she brought up me all kinds of books. And it's the craziest thing. The books tied into to 75 Hard and uh, work and the life. You know, it's it's all leadership stuff. And, and it just, yeah. I don't know, hard to explain it, but the, the start of it just led into more and it just, just worked. Mm -hmm. um, what about you, Joe? Um, I started out with the men's health uh, book, uh, The Better Man Project, mm -hmm. and that was a phenomenal book. It covered, I mean, every aspect of a healthy man's life, you know, wh whether that's, you know, just regular health checkups to eating healthy to working out to relationships at work. That was phenomenal. Uh, another one was uh, The Mercury Mind, you know, and it talks about your subcon what you're subconsciously a attracted to and that that was a fantastic book um and then essentialism uh was a was another one that i i, I read that was fantastic very good chris you know what was the first or second book that you ever read in your life that also corresponded <laughs> with uh 75 yeah. hard here yeah well funny you should say that you know and, and just for the listeners i mean i i honestly got through 
high school, never read a book. I got through, you know, you're supposed to be reading even in like in middle school or whatever. And I always sit there and drew pictures of fields and then I would fill them in and pretend like I was doing field work, you know, and <laughs> never, ever read anything. Um, and then I got through high school, didn't read other than what I had to read so I could take a test and hopefully pass it. And then college, same thing. You know, I'd go to literature classes and I would listen to what everybody else said. And then I'd participate in the discussion, not having read anything. So yeah, the first book I read from front to back, every single word was EOS Life. And I'd read a bunch of books. Um, you know, it's the entrepreneurial operating system. It's phenomenal for business people. Um, it puts a lot of things that we do in our, our lives in a really interesting perspective for business. And so that was the first one. But that just in the interest of time, the last 75 hard we just did kind of two of the main books that I read that, that I would recommend to anybody was the first one that I did was Sleep Smarter. Um, interesting, you know, some of the stats in there, you know, if, you, if you're if you sleeping less than six hours a night, one of the things they were saying in there is you're going to take about anywhere from five to seven years off your life. If you sleep up to about eight hours, you're going to get all those years back. And so people just don't sleep well. And so I learned a ton about how to sleep better just reading that book called Sleep Smarter. That was a great book. And then the the last one I read in this last 75 Heart I did was called Eat Smarter. And that was really good. Same author too. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but um, that book is really good too because it goes through all of the different nutritional things that happens in our body when we eat certain foods and how to eat things in certain timing, how to eat your proteins and your carbs and, and your fats and that kind of thing. But it was awesome books. Mm -hmm. So now I'm a reader. I, I, I didn't, I, and I'm a <laughs> lot faster at it too. I, I was a pretty slow reader. Not that I'm a fast reader now, but I can read and actually comprehend now mm. at 56. That's a pretty good thing. That's awesome. I, I would highly recommend the uh, the Power of One More by Ed Milet too. He's pretty inspirational and there's a lot of great advice in there. So that was one that I got through. I got two last things I want to hit on here. And one is, you know, the financial aspect of it because people say, well, what's it going to cost me? Or that's a, that's a lie. You know, like you said, Joe, that's a battle that you have with yourself is what is it costing me to do this, to not get updated on my books, to not be sending out invoices, not be in that field, not you know, what's it costing me? Well, there's an opportunity cost with all of this stuff too. And that mental clarity, and it, for myself personally, I think that mental clarity probably made our operation tens of thousands of dollars in that 75 hard time frame. And I don't have anything to prove that. I don't have anything to back that up, but the decisions that we made and the clarity that we had making those decisions and my mental health and the ability to go when we needed to go I think that made us a lot of money. And so I didn't look at it as a cost of what's it costing me for this time that I got to hop out of a tractor and go do my outdoor workout or go get the good food that I need versus having someone pick me up a greasy cheeseburger at the icky sticky down the road. You know, to me, there was a huge value in what I had for income. And I, I don't even know if there's any other comments on that, but I think we, I think we're guilty of, looking at what's it going to cost us instead of what's it going to make us. I well, would and, echo and that I second 100%. that hundred um, percent. I think, you know, you feel, you know, like you'd park, a, I'd park equipment and then walk back to the shop, you know, for one, you know, mm -hmm. might be a couple miles, you know, and I wouldn't say nothing to nobody, you know, normally you'd always just wait for a ride and catch your ride back. You, you'd never walk across to get. And, but the one example was, you know, the beans weren't quite ready to run yet. They just needed to dry. There's no reason I can't walk, you know, but it made, you're hundred percent right. It made the day you're more disciplined because you have to get that, your 75 hard stuff done in a such a time frame. So then it makes your work schedule more rigid. Um, it spills into things you do at home and it just, yeah, the whole clarity, um, the focus, the focus, I guess your the focus is such more, so much more intense and, and, and doing the even a walk in the middle of the night, um, just looking at the stars, just just that relaxing mind. In, yeah, just just the mindfulness. Um, it's such a positive um, that carries over. So it's and it's still carrying over. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just and it's hard to explain, but it's it's real. Joe, any comments on that? 
I, I just same thing. I mean, I had a, I had a kind of a, my fall was a bitch. <laughs> it just was yeah. kind of a fight from the start to the finish. I had massive tractor and equipment problems with my strip till rig. And, uh, you know, it helped me the mental clarity and I pivoted, I think a lot faster. I, I didn't waver on decisions. It was like, all right, we're having problems with this tractor. This ain't going to work. Got on the horn, run it a tractor. And then as I got, got into that, uh, you know, uh, we, we, I ended up to ended up renting the tractor for the entire fall. It was one of the best decisions I ever made. Um, when I got the other tractor fixed, then we were able to put that on, um, uh, you know, the John Deere vertical till, uh, you know, I, it, it, it just, everything just kind of ended up working out, had one of the best stripping years that I've had. And it started out the worst, um, you know, and, and just having that mental clar clarity, it no doubt made, made money just because of making better quality decisions. So I want to title your last two minutes, 75 hard stripping makes local farmer lots of money, <laughs> but <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> sorry, I had to, Jared laughed and it made me laugh. So <laughs> hopefully you guys get a good chuckle out of that. But uh, last thing I want to, or, you know, last thing I want to wrap up with here yeah. is, yeah, go ahead, Chris. I want to real quick give you my cost thing. You asked a great question there. And and to me, the cost of not doing it is healthcare. Okay. You know, we've hit, we went through COVID the last couple of years and all this other crap. And everybody, you know, we live in a world in an industry where the pharmaceutical industry wants us to treat our problems and not, not prevent them. It drives me nuts. Um, you know, so I said, I was, I was on that one soapbox. This is just my other one real quick. Yep. So, you know, we're going to, you know, we're just going to eat a bunch of shit, sit on the couch, you know, we, yeah, we go out and work and we sit in the tractor, like Joe said, and, and, and we'll work out tomorrow or ah, we don't need to, it's not that big a deal. Well, you're going to pay for it at some point in time, you know, I, and I tell my partners and my farm operation all the time, you know, first thing I'm going to do in the morning is I'm going to go work out. And if I spend an hour every day or, or two 45 minute sessions working out during the day and I'm healthier, I'm going to be able to farm another 10 years and be able to be that much more productive and be around for my family and for my business and for my partners versus the other alternative, which isn't a very good one. You know, and <clears throat> the one thing I would say, the last comment I'm going to make to you on cost is when you look at all the pieces of equipment as farmers, we change the oil religiously. We, we clean our equipment, we do all the maintenance, you know, we change the transmission fluid, we do all this stuff to our machinery, and then we treat our bodies like shit. And I think, you know, we have to step back and think about how are we doing this? You know, the most important piece of equipment on your farm or in your business is your body. And, and that's what makes everything else function. And so if we don't treat ourselves appropriately, the cost is immense. So sorry, but that's my my two cents on that. No, that's I, great. I gotta I I gotta add one more thing. Sorry. Uh I've suffered from migraines last 20, 22 years or so. And uh take take injections three to four times a week. That prescription is somewhere around uh twenty five hundred bucks, three grand every time I renew that subscription. It ain't costing me that, but it's costing the insurance company and everybody else that's on my plan uh, that um, and during 75 hard, the 45 days that I made it, I had one migraine. Wow. So, uh, you know, I would have refilled that, that subscription four, if not five times during that period of time. And I only used one. So, you know, I saved the healthcare system, you know, whatever that is, 14, 15 grand, 12 grand, whatever, uh, just because I put my health first. That's awesome. And that's. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that, guys. I, I, I think it's important for people to hear that. And we're so driven as farmers on the financial aspect and making good decisions. You know, the people that listen to this podcast are going to watch the video or are top tier performers. And they're people that want to better themselves and improve their operation improve their their health their livelihood so uh that really hits home to wrap up here 
guys, if, you know, someone's listening to this and we're, we're at the new year, 2023 is rolling now that trains here. It's not stopping. So if someone's listening to this and they want to do 75 hard or they're thinking about making a change or they want to start reading, what's your, what's your advice? What's your outlook to them? Uh, someone that might be hesitant or, or doesn't know where to get started and Jared, I'll pick on you first. Yeah. I mean, you just, just make the commitment. Cause there's, there's, you can talk yourself out of it cause, cause life is busy. Um, you know, you can just, if you decide to do it, just do it. And if you don't make it all the way, you know, you experience it, it'll suck you back in to do it again. You know, fortunately I, it's my first time doing it and, and I powered through to the end and, um, but would recommend it, you know, I think the beauty in 75 hard too, Jared, you hit on it is it's you're it's either all or nothing. And, or Joe, you said right. it on that tunnel, right? You know, it's all or nothing. And there's a lot of people out there, you know, I hate to say it. There's a lot of people out there that have half half-assed resolutions right now and they're going to fail and you're not going to. Well, stick I was them. asked, I was asked to Heather, Heather asked me, you got a new year's resolution. I said, no, I go, I got stuff I'm going to do. You know, mm -hmm. so no, I, I don't have no resolutions. I just got stuff I'm going to do this year. Mm -hmm. and so. And 75 hard is a great way. <laughs> because it's the same that. thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 75 hard is a great way to do that. It keeps that discipline. So Joe, what would you say to someone that, you know, is interested, thinking about doing this, wanting to make a change? Just jump. There's just, there's no other way around it. I wavered. Chris kind of put the hard sell on me in August and, uh, you know, hey, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. And I drug my feet, drug my feet, drug my feet. And then, you know, I was looking at my wedding anniversary and took 75 days off and realized it was that morning. If I wanted to be done by time our anniversary happened, I need to start that morning. And so I literally made a decision at like eight o'clock in the morning. All right, I guess today's day one. And, and you just you just got to jump. It, it's been like that with anything in my life that was meaningful. Um, you know, I, I chain smoked for 15 years till age 32. And, uh, you know, I'm in the best shape of my life. Um, and quitting smoking was like, was like that as well. All of a sudden it was just like, yep, we're just not going to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and you just do it. And that's what, Anybody out there that's wavering, just just jump. Joe, you're inspirational, and I'll tell you the 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 second time that you do 75 hard, and when you're when you're done, when you finish, uh, it's it's a real sweet feeling after personally experiencing, you know, not not getting it the first time. It just it didn't happen. It wasn't in the cards, and you buckle down and get it done. So I'm rooting for you. Looking forward to whenever down the road you decide to do that again. You know, we're going to be here cheering you on, Chris. Any uh, comments there on someone looking to jump into it? Yeah, I think to me, it's a lot, of, it's a lot like your business. You get your, your business calendar out and you have your schedule of things, things that you're going to do throughout the course of the year. I think you just put, you know, in, in my case, I'm putting 75 hard. I think it's the 15th of March now on my calendar in front of me, but it's, it's the day we get back from Las Vegas when we take our kids to spring break. That day we get back is day one. It's on our calendar. And it's not even a question. I even have to think about it. It's just, that's the day we're going to start. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's a key thing is just getting it, getting it on your schedule. So you can, you can be prepping for it mentally too, a little bit ahead of time. And then, and then when that day one starts, you just go. And or you just jump it. into it like Joe did and say eight o'clock, you yep. know, they're listening to this podcast at 2 PM <laughs> this afternoon on January 2nd or whenever it is. You know, maybe January 3rd is your day one. Maybe that's your jump off point. But well, I, making that dedication is huge. And it's okay to be different. You know, you just got to go into it with that mindset too. It's okay to be different from the norm. You know, if you can get that out there, it helps. <laughs> I, I saw something yesterday on that, Jared. I think it was on Twitter. And it was a quote that said, all of us spend our time trying to be normal when we could be extraordinary. You know, we focus on how do you want to blend in? You want to go to the party and hang out and see friends and have a social life and do whatever. We all spend our lives trying to be normal when we could be these extraordinary, exceptional people to ourselves, to our family, our communities, you know, the people that we work with day in and day out. I thought that was pretty impactful. 
um, for, for me, you know, if anybody's listening to this, if you need that support and encouragement, we're, we're happy to help and provide that. Chris, you hit on it. You know, that text message group is a ton of fun. We still sense that Jared sends all the things that he's trapping out on his little snow walks there that he's doing. And it's just fun. And it's a great sense of community to people that you might not have otherwise connected with. So I'm sure we're going to have people that reach out to us and say, hey, you know, I'm interested in doing 75 hard. Maybe they want to do it when Chris and I jump in and, and march or whatever. So if there's someone out there that's interested in doing this, you want to get connected, we can probably connect you with someone or we'd be happy to have you join in with our group, have the support. Again, we're just, we're doing this because we understand the value and importance. That's the whole point of this podcast. It's the whole point of, you know, what we do um, within AgView Solutions and the people that we work with, you know, Joe and Jared, I think you guys as, as great friends and, and family of the community that we're a part of. So uh, just thank you for taking the time to, to do this. I look forward to seeing how you guys get through 2023 and the changes that you make. But, uh, you know, congratulations to you guys on just the commitment and getting the process started. And, you know, like Chris said, more importantly, maybe the long look, long look on how this impacts our lives day in and day out. Any closing comments here, guys? No, no. happy new year. <laughs> yeah. 2023, we're on a roll. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Joe, Appreciate any words of wisdom? Any oh, words just you jump. Know? Just jump. Chris, yeah. final just, comments? Just jump. Yeah, I just echo what I said earlier. Your most important piece of equipment on your in your business is your is yourself. Take care of yourself and uh, have a successful 2023. Amen. Thanks a lot, guys. And thank you, everyone, to listening to another episode of the Ag View Pitch. We will catch you next time.